Hello, everyone. My name is Pamela Topper, and I want to thank you for attending this webinar on updates to Nexternal's integration with MailChimp's eCommerce 360. In June, I presented my first webinar on this topic, uh, and I demonstrated the really powerful marketing that's possible when using MailChimp's autoresponders and eCommerce 360 in connection with Nexternal. Then a few weeks after my webinar, MailChimp totally eliminated autoresponders and replaced it with their new workflow functionality, which changes how these campaigns are implemented, but better yet, provides better organization and marketing potential. So my goal in this webinar is to review some of the marketing power for those who didn't attend my webinar in June, as well as update everyone on how to best utilize Nexternal's integration with eCommerce 360 combined with the new MailChimp workflow functionality. While I'm speaking, if you have a question, please type it into the chat window, and I'll answer as many as I can at the end of my presentation. So let's begin with a reminder of what eCommerce 360 is. E-commerce 360 allows automated drip marketing based on purchase activity, as well as tracking email campaign ROI based on resulting purchases, which makes gauging the success of your emails plus A-B testing a whole lot easier. Like in June, I am really excited about today's topic. When I had my own online business, I wished I had this functionality. I did the marketing as best I could, but it was really tedious and time consuming to do it manually, and there was no way I could do what this automated uh, functionality can do. So now that I'm working with Nexternal, and now that automation is possible, I am really happy to tell you about it. And I'm jealous because you have it and I didn't. So why is this so exciting? Well. Imagine automation. Let's think about what that would be like. Imagine marketing that you set up once and it just works automatically from that point forward. Imagine these scenarios. Imagine that you offer a club membership. Maybe it's wine, maybe it's fruit, coffee, bread, pet food, whatever. Now imagine that just after joining the club online, your customer gets an immediate welcome email outlining the features and benefits of the club and a week later automatically gets an email with a link to your web page showing upcoming wine, wine events, and you didn't have to manually do it every time. Or imagine that everyone who orders, say, an espresso maker from your site 10 days later automatically gets an email with a recipe or two, and a few months after that gets an email with care instructions for that particular machine along with a coupon for the cleaning solution recommended by that manufacturer. Or imagine that everyone who purchases a skirt on your site automatically gets an email for two or three matching blouses, and 10 days after that, if they still haven't purchased one of those blouses, they automatically get an email with a 20% off coupon for them. Or let's say you don't discount your product. Let's say you're a luxury wine brand. Then imagine that every time someone purchases wine from you, they get an automatic email recommending other wines in your portfolio that they'd enjoy based on their palate as demonstrated by their purchase. Or just an email simply about your national winemaker dinner calendar. Another great thing about automation is that you can use automated emails for loyalty rewards in addition to promos, education, and information. For example, every time a customer reaches a certain aggregate spend amount, say every $500, you can automatically send an email with a 20% discount off their next order. These are examples of what Nexternal and MailChimp eCommerce 360 make possible, and it's what we're specifically talking about today. Using this functionality, in my view, is an absolute no-brainer if you want to increase your sales and engagement results without doing a lot of extra work. Plus, with the Nexternal integration, you can track the effectiveness of every email you send measured by how much people purchase as a result of clicking through the email. That is huge. So how is this possible? The reason this is all possible is that now, in addition to pushing customer data to MailChimp, Nexternal automatically pushes order data to MailChimp as well. Then you can use that data to measure your email success rates and slice and dice that data to send targeted relevant emails to your customers. So let's look at where that data lands in MailChimp and what you can do with it. I'm going to take you into MailChimp to show you this, see how good I am at my transitions here. Take my counter down. So when data uh, flows from external into MailChimp, 
it is going to land on the subscriber uh, record in there. And to see the subscriber records, you would go to the list section. And you might have several different lists depending upon your activity. But for instance, you may have a list for your company's e-commerce com uh, customers that are flowing in from Nextjournal. So you click on that list name, and you'll see your subscribers on that list. Now let's say you wanted to see what your customer, Sandra Becker, has purchased over time. So you click on her profile, and you get to a page that shows you a whole lot of information about Sandra Becker that's flown, that's, uh, flown in, that is flowed in from Nextjournal. When you uh, click on her e-commerce tab, you can see her e-commerce activity. You can see that she's opened three campaigns. She's clicked through on three links in those campaigns. She's placed two orders for a total of $610 and change. And you can also see that only one of those orders was placed as a result of clicking through an email campaign. This one was, this one was not. Now, if you want to see all of the orders that were placed as a result of clicking through a particular campaign, you'd go to the campaign report, which you can get to from a number of places. If the campaign were sent as a regular campaign, you could click on the campaign area and go there. If it was sent as an automated email, as a part of a workflow, you would go into automation. But from here, the easiest way to do it is simply click on the campaign name. And you can see here that there are three orders for the entire campaign. I'm sure you'll get more orders than that on your campaigns, but I was running a test, and this was all the time I had to create orders. So now let's look at how easy it is to set up automated workflows in MailChimp. So we're going to navigate to the automation. This used to be called autoresponders. Now it's called automation. For those of you who are familiar with MailChimp, workflows are a new way of organizing and setting up automated trip campaigns. They replace what used to be called autoresponders, and can contain a single email or a series of emails that will be sent automatically based on your segmentation and timing criteria. What Workflows brings to the party is not only the ability to set up automated emails like autoresponders, but fantastically the ability to group emails into specific series to be sent at timed intervals. With autoresponders, you could do that. You could, you could create the series emails but you couldn't easily manage those series group campaigns because there was nothing that related the series of emails together. You had to manage the grouping almost by memory or with a spreadsheet or something to remember which autoresponders related to which campaign series and what was going out after what. Now, Workflows handles all that organization for you and makes it much easier to manage your campaigns. So to set up a workflow uh, in MailChimp, you would navigate here to the automation section. And then you'd click on the Create Automation Workflow button in the upper uh, right. For today, I've already set up some examples, so we're going to take a look at those. And I'm going to start with an example that shows how workflows make your life easier by grouping related emails together. So let's look at this example over here. Once you click on the Create Automation Workflow in the upper right, it would take you to a page that looks like this. First, you would select the list to which you want to send the campaign. Later, and you can see it's a pull down, so you can select a list. First, um, the, after this, later on, on another screen that I'll show you, you'll have the opportunity to segment that list. This is just a selection of the main list from which we'll do the segmentations. Typically, this would be your company's e-commerce customers. Next, you select a workflow. And as you can see, you've got all kinds of choices here. But since we're focusing on e-commerce 360 integration today, purchase-based uh, purchase history workflows, we're going to um, focus on the ones that relate specifically to that, which include best customer emails, specific product purchase, add any product purchase, and purchase from category of products. Now, in the case of the example that I'm showing you now, I want to set up a workflow to promote my wine club to non-wine club members who spend at least $100 or more in a single purchase of current release wines from my site. So because I have a category for current release wines on my site, I'm going to select purchase from category of products. On the next page, I'll name my workflow. This is an internal name just so I know what it is. And while most of the rest is pre-populated for you, I do suggest you read your options on this page to determine which ones you want to use. And here are some tips about some of these things. I would always check the Send Activity Digest email. This will generate a daily email to you to tell you how the workflow is doing. And don't worry if you have multiple users on your account. It will allow you to edit 
which of those users get that daily report. Also, be sure that eCommerce 360 link tracking is checked. When tracking is turned on, MailChimp puts, it, it puts some extra code in the campaign link URL so that all the orders placed as a result of clicking through that campaign will be tracked. And again, this will allow you to track the purchases you get as a result of email click-throughs and thereby track your ROI on the campaign. Also, for those of you who are using Google Analytics and Salesforce, uh, both of those programs are fully integrated with Nextternal. And if you are using one or both of those, I would, I would uh, definitely check Google Analytics link tracking. And if you're using Salesforce, click track stats in Salesforce. Might as well use all the power that's available to you when you send these things out. So now that we've selected our list and workflow, we'll select and configure triggers and timing options. And this is where the segmentation comes in. Here's where we'll designate the current release wine. If you recall, I wanted this to go to non-wine club members who purchased wine in this category. So here's where I designate the category. And because we want this workflow to go to wine purchasers only if they're not already wine club members, I've added a segmentation here requiring that customer type be consumer. Real quick, for those of you who may not have clubs or may not yet uh, be using external, by definition in our system, if someone is typed a consumer, they are not already a wine club member, which would be a different customer type in that system. You can see here there are a lot of different things to choose from, so I've done a customer type segmentation. Now, because I want this email to go only to consumers, who purchased $100 or more in a single order, because I think those are the more, most likely candidates to join my club, I've also set up a second condition for order spend. I select spent one order and entered more than $99. And very importantly, I made sure that the matching criteria is on all, so that all of these criteria are met before an email will be sent. Your choices are all and any. That's the same as saying either or both. Very important to get that logic right. You can also check the box down here uh, for send first email immediately to existing subscribers who meet conditions. But think about that carefully before you do it. If you turned on order integration in June when we first uh, talked about this, you might send to folks for whom this email is no longer timely. So think that through based on the content of your campaign. In this particular case, I want to send an email offering to modify an order that the customer placed today. I want to say, hey, you just placed an order. Thanks a lot if you join my club. I'll go back into my system and modify that order for you and give your discounts to you immediately. So because I want them to take immediate action today if they join the club today, I'm not going to check this because it wouldn't apply to my people who came into my system in June or July or August. Now, if my email simply included a plug for the club without references to the just placed order, I might well check that box. Anyway, then we tell the system what days and time we want this email to send on. And here's where there's a little departure from auto responders. Um, all the timing was handled in one place on auto responders. And uh, in workflows, it's bifurcated. Here, uh, we know that we want the email to go on the same day they place their order because I'm encouraging them to take immediate same day action. So I know that I want that email to go out every day because I don't know what day they're going to place their order. And I know I also want it to go as soon as possible uh, after they place their order. We will have the opportunity to later to set more specific timing of each email in the series, but this is generally what I want to have happen in my workflow. So this is my settings for this page. Now I'm going to set up my emails in the workflow. And for purposes of this demo, I've already set up the two emails for the series. At the top of the page, you can review your selections of workflow and conditions just to make sure you know, they are what you want them to be. Below that, you, here's where the second timing element comes in. You get to pick when each of the emails in the series is going to go out. And that's what this delay is about. If you click on that, you can see that you have the same kinds of selections you had in autoresponders. So with regard to timing, you have to think about it on the trigger page and the emails page. 
based on our earlier settings for this example. We already know it will go out every day as soon as possible, but here we get to set a more specific delay if we choose. In this case, I want this message to be sent immediately as the trigger is met, again, so I can apply my retroactive discounts to the order they just placed. Once you make your selection with regard to delay, don't forget to hit save or you will think you made a selection that didn't get saved. So now we join our, now we design our email. And first we give it an internal name so we know what it is. We give it a subject line. We select a template on the next page. And then we design our email. When we're done designing our email, in the upper right, we hit save and return to the workflow. Now to add a second email in this series, I simply check the add email button down at the bottom. And I went through the same steps for email setup number two. I made it go out one week after the first email, and then I designed my email and set it all up. For those of you who are using autoresponders, you would also have at the bottom here the option of importing an existing autoresponder email into this workflow. You can't see it today because I've already set up my emails in this example, but if you want to convert an autoresponder to a workflow email in your system, MailChimp offers a great how-to article in their online support section about converting autoresponders to automation workflows. So you will have an opportunity to move uh, campaigns that you've already set up into this new workflow uh, format. So when we're done setting up our workflow, we confirm it, and when we're ready for it to begin, we will hit the Start Workflow button down uh, at the bottom. Setting up workflow flows like this one is great for any campaign where you want a customer who meets a single set of trigger criteria to get a series of emails, like the example we just saw, or if you're sending out weekly class or training materials, or like the espresso machine example I mentioned earlier, where the purchasers got two follow-up emails, one with recipes and then the next one with care instructions and a coupon for machine cleaning supplies. Now let's take a look at another example that I love, the loyalty bonuses that I talked about earlier. This example shows how you can use workflows just like autoresponders without grouping emails into series if required to meet your campaign goals. Whenever there is a series that works together, oh my gosh, workflows will be a great way to go. But sometimes you've got situations where really you only want one email and the series can't quite be set up in a workflow. Let's look at the $500 spend bonus uh, to show you that. This spend bonus, I love this because it's a great carrot to motivate folks to spend more with you and a great way to reward your best customers at the same time. And here again, we're going to select our general customer list. And in this case, we'll choose the workflow for any product purchased since the purchase that brings the customer over the spend limit will be the trigger for the workflow. Um, coincidentally, you could have also used a custom workflow and selected any product purchase as the logic for the custom workflow. But since it fits nicely into any product purchase, that's the way I'm going to go today. I've given it an, a name and a subject line. I've set up my Activity Digest email. I've turned on e-commerce 360 link tracking. I've turned on Google Analytics and Salesforce if I'm using it. And I'm ready to set up my triggers. To set up my triggers, I've selected my spend totals of more than $4.99. Well, first, here I can see uh, what's going on here with my workflow. Now I'm setting up my segmentations. And I've set these up so that my spend totals are more than $499.99 and less than 1000 since this is a reward for spending $500 or more. And if they spend $1,000 in a single order, I wouldn't want them to get two emails. I only want them to get uh, one. So that's what uh, will keep the, the spend total more than and less than working together will keep that in check. 
for this campaign, I don't want the emails to go immediately upon triggering purchase because they'll just have spent money with me to get there. And based on my general order trends in my business, maybe I know that a future purchase is most likely made on my site on a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So I'm going to uncheck Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, knowing that I can further dial in the delay times on the next page of my workflow. And unlike the last series we set up, I want these emails to be sent at what I know is my database's optimal open and use time, which is around 10 a.m. Pacific. You can uh, send them as soon as possible, like we did last time, at a specific time, or only between certain times. Now I'm going to set up my emails. And I would set up and confirm my email just like we did on the last example, so I'm not going to go through it again. But instead of setting up a second email in the series like we did on the club example, I'm going to set up unique workflows for the $1,000 spend bonus, the $1,500 spend bonus, and so on, just as I would have set up unique autoresponders. Here you can see I've set up a $1,000 spend loyalty bonus with a single email using the same logic that I used for the $500 bonus. This kind of scenario, using workflows as single emails, much like we did with autoresponders, is applicable in scenarios where you don't want to send a series, but just a single email, like if you want to follow up a purchase with a short survey to ensure you're providing a good online shopping experience. It also is applicable if you have a promo series where the trigger changes part of the way through, like the skirt example I mentioned earlier. That would be a great example of this, where all skirt purchasers get an email about matching blouses, but only a subsection of those purchasers, those who haven't since purchased either of the matching blouses, gets the second email with a coupon toward those blouses. So now let's we look at uh, let's let's look uh, quickly at some of the other options you have for triggers because there are really a lot. These are two very limited options that I've shown you. I'm not going to take the time to go over every option you have because here there are so many and you can get really creative with this stuff. But some of my favorites that we haven't discussed yet include some e-commerce options and some that are not e-commerce but can also form the basis for some very effective revenue-producing campaigns. And for those of you who attended in June, please excuse my repetition from the first webinar, but these were my favorites then, and they still are, so I'm going to go over them again. For purchase history-based uh, campaigns, I like purchase activity. Why? Because this allows me to identify those who have never purchased and send them a promo to try and get them to purchase. I also like spent one order for the reasons that you saw me use it earlier on the loyalty bonus, but also because it allows me to send like-priced options to people with certain spend amounts. So like, for example, at Christmas time, if someone orders a $40 gift, I can send them an email with a link to more gifts for $50 and under. I also like product purchased because it allows me to send emails about related products to people who I know are highly likely to be interested in them. If somebody buys a Balance Max golf bag, they're probably really interested uh, if I send them an email about, uh, I don't know, tees and golf balls. So now there's some non-commerce criteria that I like as well. Campaign, and you can see there's a lot of criteria here that you can select from. Campaign activity is the one I'm focused on today. This is like if folks um, open, click, or didn't open, uh, or whatever on your last five campaigns, all recent campaigns, specific campaigns, etc. Based on their activity from a prior campaign, you can then send them an automated uh, follow-up email if they do or don't do certain things. Also, last order date can be a very useful segmenting criteria. I like it because it allows me to determine who hasn't purchased in a while, so I can send them an offer to get them re-engaged and to get them to purchase again. I'm sure many of you have gotten those kinds of emails from other merchants. So now that we've seen all this great, wonderful stuff, let's talk about how to actually get it done in external to set up the uh, integration to make all this possible. I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint here and show you how to enable the order data transfer in Nextternal. So the first thing you do in your Nextternal order management system is navigate to Settings, Compatible Software, MailChimp, Email Marketing. If you're not already passing customer data, you'll have to enter your API key here.
for those of you who are already using the customer data integration that existed prior to this new integration, that key is already there for you. Then you select preset lists to which you want your customers and affiliates to flow. This one would probably be your company's e-commerce customers, like the list we were using on my examples. And if you're using affiliates, you may have a separate list for them. Then you would click the box next to Sync MailChimp Lists. This will enable customer data like name, email address, customer type, address, and zip code to flow into MailChimp. This also synchronizes the unsubscribes with Nixternal so that if somebody unsubscribes in response to an email, Nixternal and MailChimp will always match. Then to enable this order data flow so that 360 can kick in, you would check sync orders with MailChimp. Uh, the sync date will auto-populate with today's date, or you can move it to a future date if you, if, if you wish. This is an old slide from my last webinar, so it's got a, an old date on it, but really it would be today's, or a, and you can move it to a, a future date. Now here's a tip for you um, on this. Because historical data will not flow into MailChimp, even if you're not planning on using automated workflows or even sending email campaigns right now, we recommend turning this on as soon as possible to start pushing order data so it's there when you want to use it. In fact, even if you're not using MailChimp right now, we recommend you sign up for a free account and start this integration so that if and when you choose to take advantage of this powerhouse marketing, the data will be there for you. Because if you turn it on at the time you start to use it, you're going to have to start collecting data at that time. So just like I tell my clients with Google Analytics, even if you're not planning on looking at it right now, start collecting the data so that when you're ready to use it, it will be there for you. Anyway, then you have the option to exclude subscription orders and bulk orders. These are two types of recurring orders. And for those of you who don't know what these are, real quick, subscription orders are created using external subscription functionality, for instance, like uh, consumables, vitamins, coffee, pet food, or for monthly services, where every month or quarter, for example, the customer is getting the same item for the same amount. And in this case, the orders simply create themselves automatically in your OMS and just appear there for you to process. It's pretty cool function, functionality um, for any kind of consumable product. Bulk orders are when someone signs up to get periodic shipments, like for a wine club or a bread club or olive oil club, for instance, but the contents are different from order to order, and the orders are placed by you using our bulk ordering capability instead of the orders automatically showing up. Anyway, in both cases, each customer will have regular periodic orders, whether or not for the same item. And you can choose to include or exclude those orders to flow into MailChimp. If you have them flow in, the orders will serve as triggers, just like all your other orders. Whereas if you don't include them, then your triggers will work only based on non-subscription and non-bulk orders. And that's really all there is to it. There are no plugins, nothing. You just check these boxes, and once this is enabled, External starts to push data to MailChimp, and you can then set up your campaigns and automated workflows with e-commerce 360 tracking on them, and you're all set. So in closing, I'd just like to give you uh, a few tips that I think will be very helpful to you. First, um, I get a lot of questions about this. MailChimp offers free accounts for merchants with lists under 2,000 members. Many of you may already be using a free MailChimp account. E-commerce 360 is also free, as is the external integration with MailChimp, but using automated workflows requires a paid Chimp account, which can be a pay-as-you-go account. Their prices are super reasonable, and I have absolutely no doubt that the revenue you drive using this feature will totally way more than make up for the cost. Chimp uh, charges by the size of your list. So keeping your list clean can help you control your costs. And they even have a nifty little cost calculator on their site. So you can plug in your list size and the number of emails and see what kind of charges you can expect. Uh, don't groan if you have to start paying for it. You will make more than you pay. I am certain of it. Also, think through your automation strategy carefully to avoid including the same customer in too many workflow segments at the same time. 
Uh, in other words, you still want to manage your touch points, and you should consider these automated emails a part of your overall marketing calendar and strategy. Of course, they're, they're not entirely predictable in terms of timing, so you just have to accept that they'll fall where they'll fall. But on the other hand, do keep in mind that folks will tolerate and even appreciate more frequent emails if the emails are relevant to them and interesting to them. Thirdly, depending on the nature of your workflows and the nature of your product catalog, I suggest calendaring periodic reviews of your workflows to ensure that promoted products are still in stock, emails are still relevant, and by gosh, that they're getting results. There's no sense in continuing to send an email that's not generating revenue when you could replace it with one that might. So you want to make sure these things are doing what you want them to do, and if not, experiment with replacing it with something that might be more effective. Finally, to learn the new workflow functionality, I took advantage of two great resources, and I'd like to share them with you. First, MailChimp support is really quite good. I would recommend using their online articles as well as their email support if you need it. If you go to the MailChimp website, you can go to their support section and simply search on workflow within that section. You'll see a number of articles on getting started, setting them up, ideas, converting autoresponders, and a bunch of other topics that are extremely helpful. Second, if you uh, want to have a human being to work with that's actually that whose voice you can hear, uh, you can contact our friends at AnnexCore, who are certified MailChimp experts. These guys have great ratings and super reasonable rates. They've worked with several of uh, Nexternal's customers who are really very happy with their work. And for their contact info, uh, you would navigate to the Nexternal homepage and pull down from the top navigation under For Clients and pull down to Partners Email Marketing, and you'll find their contact information there. So that's the end of my presentation. I'm going to put up my contact information so that you know how to get a hold of me after the webinar. And now I'm happy to take questions uh, through the chat window if you have any. Here's one. Um, how often does external push data to MailChimp? Excellent question. Um, we push data every 10 minutes, so if you're testing this, uh, you want to be sure to wait at least 10 minutes to see if it worked. Um, does MailChimp track orders that don't originate from an email? Yes, it does. It tracks orders regardless of how they originate. Uh, if you recall in my example, um, I showed you that there was a uh, Sandra Becker had one email that was the result of clicking through and one that was not. So it tracks all orders. If you have Ecom 360 tracking turned on in a campaign when the order is resulting from click-throughs on the campaign, uh, they will also be associated uh, with the campaign. Uh, can I get my full order history into MailChimp, or does data begin to accumulate from the date when I turn on the integration? Uh, again, you cannot push historical data into MailChimp uh, from Nextternal. That's why we recommend opening a free account and turning on the integration immediately, even if you aren't ready to use this functionality at this time. Uh, someone just asked if I'll be able to send out this presentation via email after we end the call. I am recording this, and we will um, post the recording on uh, an external YouTube channel, which you can reach at youtube.com slash nexternal. Um, so you can look for that in a day or two, and it will be up there for you to review. Uh, looks like we're over time a little bit, so I'm going to end the webinar here. I appreciate all your participation. Uh, and, uh, oh wait, there is one more. Is there any way to import customer purchase data from a third party? That is actually a question you'd have to ask MailChimp. This integration is about pushing customer order data from Nextternal into MailChimp. If you can push that third party order data into Nextternal, or directly into MailChimp, then it would land there as well. 
And with that, I'm going to end the webinar. I appreciate everybody's attendance, and uh, we look forward to seeing you next week at uh, our weekly webinar series. Thanks a lot.